This is Caden's 99 Mustang GT. Now, first off, how easy is this thing to get off the line? Wow, that clutch just engages right away. Uh, short shifter, incredibly short, incredibly short. Definitely will be interesting to see how it does uh, when we start getting into the corners and kind of downshifting and upshifting a little bit quicker. But, okay, <laughs> this is a 99 Mustang GT. Uh, but Caden's not your average Mustang owner, so of course, obviously, it's got a front mount single turbo uh, on the front there. He installed himself. Uh, apparently, it took him only three days. Uh, and building Mustangs is not Caden's full-time job. So obviously, a guy who loves Mustangs, a guy who loves uh, forced induction, RPM. <laughs> I'll close the window. Usually we put two mics, one for me, one for the exhaust. But here in Caden's car, uh, things are a little bit different, okay? He, you know, and this is the risk you take in our modern society where this war on modified cars has begun and everybody wants to shut down our fun forever. Uh, so things like this with a freaking cutout in the front bumper where all the noise comes out of right ahead of you, along with the turbo. There's basically nothing coming from behind, which is really weird. But again, front engine, big displacement, loose rear end, okay? <laughs> That's the recipe. That's the recipe. And limiter though. Oh my god, the turbo whistle. The spool is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Really smooth. But it's running fairly low boost right now. I believe Caden said it was around 6 or 7 PSI. Uh, should be good for around 400 roughly at the wheels. It has not been on the dyno yet. Uh, and for Caden's purposes, nor does it need to be. This is a driver's car um, and a car that you can just kind of feel out. Uh, you guys probably know under the hood here is a single cam uh, 4.6, 4.6 liter. Now from the factory in the GT models, uh, which this one is here, 35th anniversary edition, uh, they don't make a whole lot of power uh, and they sound like they're going very quick when in reality it's it's under 300 horsepower. I think they're like 260, 270 uh, horsepower. Thinking back to that 03, 04 Cobra, I kind of think of that as like, that was essentially, to me at least, that was the bridge, that was the gap that brought the Mustang from a muscle car to a all-out American sports car, okay? Now, obviously, it took a few years and it took a few iterations, but the Cobra with the independent rear suspension uh, and other tweaks like that and chassis rigidity and all those things that actually create a better handling, more enjoyable driving experience on a road like this begun the transformation into what we see now, which is, kind of sucks to say, but the new GT500 uh, being an automatic-only car. Immaculate paint, the valve covers, paint match to the exterior. 
It's all in the details. Great fitment. Uh, we got springs in the back, coilovers in the front. I mean, it's a Mustang. The rear end's hopping around a little bit. But again, it's a street car. It's here to have fun. It's here to rip burnouts and sleigh tires and stuff. Feels like peak torque is somewhere around 3,500. That's when the spool really hits home. But the sound is what you want from this car. The sound is what we're here for. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> this is, this is sick. This is sick. Up until today, I had not seen Caden for seven or eight years, okay? So there's a bit of a story behind this. Uh, for real, real OGs, I mean, I don't expect any of you guys watching this currently to have watched the very first, the very first video under the name Roads Untraveled that we ever did, but Caden was in that video. If it wasn't for Caden, we would not have had, and Logan and Michael, we would not have had uh, that video put together. We would not have had the opportunity to go to that garage. I'm pu I'll put up a couple of the clips right now um, and to shoot this. Just a cringy interview. You know, they were just having fun. And I was like, I just want to be around people who are having fun with cars and that are <laughs> driving fast and driving loud and building cool things and being active and swapping engines and stuff. She's nasty. Got that huge hood on the front there. I love a car that makes you struggle to look out of the to look out of the windshield. Luckily, the factory seats uh, in this generation Mustang are actually pretty high up. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So base. Oh, Porsche gang. What do we got? A bunch of Boxsters, a Cayman, and the 911 holding up the rear end. Yeah, I mean, the worst thing about this generation Mustang, I, I honestly, I wouldn't even say the suspension set up from factory. I wouldn't even say how the rear end behaves in the corners, which is like kind of a problem in these cars, but it's, this, it's just the steering. The steering kills these cars for me as we pass another one, factory GT. Um, it doesn't have that precision uh, that some of the other Mustangs I've driven do have. Obviously, like I said, I'm jaded. I've driven a GT350R. Uh, but again, everything's in context uh, and the turbo makes up for it. The sound makes up for it. The look looks up, makes up for it. Um, and some of the cars that we wanted to film or that when Caden told me about them, I was like, oh, we definitely got to film that. He's like, oh no, sorry, dude. That one blew up like a week after we built it. But that's just how it goes. When you're boosting American V8s, when you're boosting engines that were not, were absolutely not meant to be boosted, uh, like from the factory that wasn't really in in mind, uh, you're just gonna run into problems. There's no escaping that. Some nights I like rain, you know, the, the sound of rain hitting glass to fall asleep. <laughs> but I could I, I could fall asleep in this seat right now just to the sound of that idling edge. <laughs> I'm weird, guys, okay? I've, all I've done for the past seven years is just drive other people's cars. <laughs> Honestly, hooks up pretty good. All things considered, hooks up pretty good. This is one of the benefits. This is something I love about driving other people's cars and ripping our local back roads is that especially in a Mustang like this, in a car like this, you notice, or I notice, especially, you know, the Japanese cars and the Euro guys, they never look at the Mustang guys. They never make eye contact. It's like a weird, like, oh my God, the must, you know, obviously the Mustang has a, I think for a couple years there, it definitely had a bad connotation of, uh, spinning out and crashing and making Mustang owners look bad outside of car meets. Uh, and I think some of that internet hate has spilled out onto the street. 
Uh, because people are like, like this guy in the Civic, is he gonna look? No, no, his eyes are just dead straight forward. No smile, no nod, no nothing. No nothing, okay? I don't care what you drive. If I'm driving my car and your car is dope, I'll probably notice it. I'll probably notice it. I think what I wanna get out of this video uh, is that A, these cars are like such a bargain right now. Like I said, kind of under 10K for a GT, maybe a little bit more. I mean, people are asking more for clean 50 Fox body manuals uh, than they are SN95 GTs at this point, which is kind of, I mean, obviously the 5.0 is kind of a more, I guess, respected engine than the 4.6. A lot of people don't like the two valve 4.6. Uh, when naturally aspirated, here is a totally different story. But if you want to somewhere to start, I think this is a great platform. I, I really do. Uh, some guys kind of like the factory kind of like hoppity kind of rear end feel. Like uh, John down in San Diego, who we filmed is filmed with a few years back his gt500 and he drifts that thing he drifts all his cars i watch his instagram stories he's sideways in his c5 he's sideways in his gt500 all the cars that are not tr traditionally drift cars and and he's filming he's like shooting with his right hand one-handed like full confidence in the car sliding on ramps and everything it is absolutely insane and i you can kind of feel that uh, when you're powering out of a corner, especially with the added torque that you get from the turbo, uh, you feel the rear end, but you feel exactly where the limit of grip is about to be. There's just not as much, it's not as gradual. There's not as much forgiveness as there would be in like a more modern Mustang uh, from what I felt. So I can see once you snap through that, I'm sure once you're actually in angle that it's not too difficult with the right differential to actually hold a slide. And again, first episode, first episode of Roads and Travel to here, eight years ago, 2013. We didn't, and that wasn't even actually on our Roads on Travel channel. We had started like a different company, that, and that we just randomly, you know, I was just like, "Hey, Roads on Travel, I want to make a automotive web show." <laughs> There's the first episode, and now here we are. It's kind of weird, but. If it wasn't for those three guys, and if it wasn't for, you can tell that guy wanted a little bit of turbo spool. Uh, if it wasn't for Grayson and Adam, Adam Burnett driving our first camera car for that first shoot downtown Vancouver, if it wasn't for that group of people, us six guys, uh, none of this would have ever happened. So yes, this video is about Caden's Mustang and the cars that they're building. Uh, and if you're local, you should definitely hit up Caden. I'll put up his Instagram. Uh, you should definitely hit these guys up if you're looking to modify your Mustang, if you just want info or want some actual real life expertise uh, and knowledge and people who have actually worked and driven these cars for the last just so many years, you know, who grew up loving these cars. Those are your guys. Um, Everybody loves the Turbo Mustang. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out Caden on Instagram. Hit me up on Instagram. If you wanna see what we're shooting on a day-to-day -day basis um, and kind of cars we've got coming up on the show. Uh, and until then, see you guys next time.